Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're gonna take a little bit of a look at Linux. And if you're somebody that has played around with Linux or just generally has played around with other operating systems that are alternatives to Windows or Mac, then this probably isn't the video for you. This is a little bit more of a beginner geared video. Uh, we're gonna take a look at how easy it is to take a fresh computer, in this case, that Dell Optiplex I've been playing around with lately that I bought recently from eBay. And we're gonna look at how easy it is to get Linux and install it on a brand new computer and get up and running with a free operating system that has absolutely no cost. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tools you're gonna need for this process and just get going with it. So the one piece of hardware you're actually going to need for this process, other than access to a computer to do sort of the background, uh, getting the USB drive ready is the actual USB drive that you use for installation. So I'm using this little 32 gigabyte flash drive. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's a slower USB 2 flash drive or just an old flash drive you have laying around, as long as the capacity is large enough and the capacity does depend on the distribution that you happen to be using. Really though, if you're over four gigabytes, then you're in good shape and no more expensive than these flash drives are. Hopefully you have one just laying around somewhere, but if you do need to run out and buy a flash drive, expect to pay about 10 bucks for one that'll work just fine. So now that we have our hardware in the USB drive that we're gonna be using for this project, you basically just have to plug it into the computer that you're using to get the USB drive ready. So obviously you'll need access to a secondary PC. Hopefully you either have one laying around, you have access to like, I don't know, a library computer, maybe you have a school that you go to that you can use a computer for free, or hopefully if nothing else, you have a friend that you can either borrow their computer or go over to their house and borrow their internet for a few minutes. So first we're gonna go to unetbootin.github.io and there are several of these types of tools you can use for this process. This just happens to be the one that I use. And when you go to this page, you'll just click the Windows download if you're on a Windows system, the Linux download if you're on a Linux system, and the Mac download if you're on a Mac system. Since I'm on a Windows system, I'm gonna be demonstrating that process. So I'll just click the download button for the Windows and it'll download in a few seconds. Now, the next thing that we're gonna actually need is the actual Linux distribution that we're using. In this case, I'm gonna be using uh, Linux Mint 18.3 because it's the most recent edition of Linux Mint at the time of filming this. And when I go to the download page here, I'm presented with several different options for different uh, desktop uh, environments here. So I'm gonna just stick with Cinnamon because that seems to be the one that uh, Linux Mint likes to push a little bit more. And I am gonna be downloading the 64-bit version. So I'll just click 64-bit download. And then it has several different mirrors. These all will download the file, some of them a little bit faster than others. So I'm just gonna go with advancedhosters.com and click on that button and you'll notice that the ISO file starts downloading and that'll take a lot longer than the UNET Booten just because it's such a large file comparatively, it is 1.8 gigabytes. So we'll come back once that's finished. Okay, now that we have both of the files we need downloaded, and by the way, I'll go ahead and link these things in the description down below just in case uh, you have trouble finding it or just to make it simpler on you to find these tools. We're gonna open the first one we download, the UNET Bootin, uh, and this should just be in your downloads folder, but you can just open it from your web browser as well. So I'll just click that icon and it'll actually go ahead and run. And it's a nice little program because it does not require an installer to actually run the program. Now. At the top here, we have two options. We have distribution, in which case, if you're using a specific distribution of Linux, uh, you can actually, or some other operating systems as well, you can just actually tell it which one you're using. So for example, if I'm using Linux Mint, which we are, I can pick Linux Mint and then select which version I wanna download. The thing is, we're using 18.3 and it is not available for this. So uh, for a custom ISO image, which is what we just downloaded, we're gonna click on disk image and make sure that we have selected ISO here. And we're gonna click these three dots to go find our ISO file, which should just be in our downloads folder. And of course, in our downloads folder, we have Linux Mint 18.3. We're just gonna go ahead and select that ISO file. And other than that, we just have to make sure that we have USB drive uh, set there. We're not using a hard disk. And the drive letter that I'm using is actually my G drive. So when you insert your flash drive, just make sure that you're picking the actual flash drive here and not something like a secondary hard drive on your system or another flash drive that you may also have plugged into your system. Make sure that you're selecting the right drive letter. So this would be the G drive for me. Now that I have that selected, I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay and let this tool do its thing. 
Now, it is unlikely that you'll get this pop-up, and I'm getting this pop-up because the USB drive I'm already using has already gone through this process. So it says the installable already exists, press yes to, to all to override it and not to be prompted again, which is what I'm gonna do. You will probably not see this at all. Okay, now that that process is complete, and by the way, it took in real time about a couple minutes to complete, you can go ahead and click exit. You can eject your flash drive and move it over to the PC that you're gonna be running Linux on, and that's what we're gonna do now. So you are done with the uh, secondary computer that you needed to set everything up on your flash drive. So look at this image for just a second before we start. You'll notice that it looks very strange and there's some tearing and that sort of thing. This is because of the capture card I used for this process. So as you see some of these screen tearing issues throughout this process as we install Linux Mint, understand there's nothing wrong with this installation of Linux Mint. You can still see the whole process just fine. Just be aware that this was not something wrong with Linux Mint or the computer itself. This was simply the capture that I was doing on the computer is at fault. So sure, it's annoying to look at, but the process is perfectly fine. And now that we are with the uh, USB drive installed in the uh, computer that we're actually going to be using with Linux Mint, you want to go ahead and hit whatever key combination it takes to get you to a boot menu. In my computer's case, it's actually going to be F12, but I know in a lot of other computers it's something like F8, sometimes it's the delete key. But what you're going to do is, once you get into this boot menu, you're going to find that USB device that we have Linux Mint sitting on right now, and that's just going to be USB storage device, and go ahead and click that enter button. Now you'll be presented with the UNet boot and menu, and you're just going to go ahead and hit start Linux Mint. And when you hit enter, it will take it a little bit, maybe a few seconds here to start doing something, so just be patient and let it boot into Linux Mint. Okay, now it gives us this message that we're running in software rendering mode. That's because I have an NVIDIA graphics card that I'm running on, but it does not have the drivers for that. So for the moment, we're not going to worry about that at all. And some of you may not even see that if you're using like your integrated uh, Intel graphics. You probably won't even see that at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that to dismiss it. What I'm really interested in is this install Linux Mint button. So I'm going to double click that. And this takes us to a basic installer, a lot like you would see on any Windows machine. And here you just select your language and then click continue. A lot of this is going to be clicking continue through. However, this first little prompt, install third party software, I highly recommend for almost everyone to go ahead and install those things because this will do things like installing uh, drivers for your Wi-Fi card if you happen to have one, uh, graphics cards for example. Uh, depending on what model of graphics card you have, uh, MP3 codecs, uh, video codecs, things that just make life easier to just run the files that you're probably going to be using anyways. So unless you know you don't need these, like you're just 100% sure you don't need these, I would go ahead and install them as a just-in-case down the road uh, scenario. Now, unless you're a little bit experienced with dealing with uh, file systems and different partitions, the easiest option here, and especially if you're planning on using this as just a standalone system on a computer by itself, you're not running other operating systems, which I'm not covering in this video at all, just go ahead and click Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint, because that's going to erase your, uh, your disk completely. Uh, your, your target disk, so your hard drive or your SSD in my case, and it's going to install Linux Mint by itself and it'll handle all of the partitioning and all of that automatically. So just go ahead and click that option and then hit install now. And then when asked if you want to write those changes to the disk, you're going to go ahead and click continue. At this point, you're just clicking through and setting up things like your account. So I'm in Indianapolis, for example. I'm using a regular standard English keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and set up my uh, username. I am Shane, and my computer's name is going to be Shane-Linux. Username will be Shane. I'll go ahead and pick a password and then you can click whether you want it to log in automatically when it starts up if you want to require the password or what the case is I'm just gonna leave those options alone and go ahead and click continue and at this point it's gonna go ahead and install the operating system and you can sort of sit back and relax it'll give you the message uh, to restart the computer once the installation process is over so we'll come back for that and now that that installation process is complete you can go ahead and just click restart now but the next time it boots up it's gonna boot up using the SSD or hard drive instead of that USB drive and you'll actually have your full operating system installed and ready to go and of course if you want to make sure that it's not booting off that uh, flash drive that you 
have inserted into the computer. You can either remove it, which is definitely the easiest way, or you can just pop back into that boot menu that you used earlier. And this time though, select the SATA based either hard drive or SSD that you're booting off of. And of course you'll notice that the SSD boots much faster because it is just a much faster interface than USB 3. So I'll go ahead and type in my password for the first time. Hit enter. And we are on the desktop now. So again, we're running in software rendering mode. Now, if you get that message, one thing you're gonna wanna click on with this welcome screen is the drivers manager. And you're gonna have to type in your password to do this process. And then for me, I'm gonna go ahead and download the NVIDIA driver just because it's the recommended one. There's this open source version you can go with as well. And I'm not gonna update my microcode right now because this will work just fine without updating that microcode. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that NVIDIA driver and click apply changes here so that I download the proper driver for my graphics card. Again, you may not need to go through that extra step but it is a step that you may have to go through if you're using an NVIDIA dedicated graphics card. And then once you get that driver downloaded, if that's an extra step you need, you can go ahead and click the restart button to restart the computer again. And here we are at last with the actual Linux Mint desktop and with my graphics driver fully installed, you'll notice that that message that was previously up in the top right is gone. Now, I understand that uh, on your screen, I believe this looks a little bit stretched right now and that's just because the resolution it's currently running at. And you can go into the settings to change the display resolution to match up with the monitor that you happen to be using. Since I'm running through a graphics card, things are just a little bit sort of uh, messy and sloppy looking. Uh, that's not to do with the system doing something wrong, that's just because the resolution it's pushing through the capture card. So at this point, you are free to use the computer however you feel like. The default browser here is Firefox, which lives down here in the uh, system uh, sort of uh, icon bar there but you can also click the menu icon and uh, you can install other uh, applications through either the actual application manager the software manager or you can go through Firefox for example and go to the uh, Chrome website if that's what you want to use google.com slash Chrome to download the Linux version of Google Chrome which I always do for my Linux systems because I just prefer Chrome and it syncs everything up for me it's just great and sure I know you probably shouldn't trust Google, but hey, what are you going to do? Everyone has their flaws. So this is the basic way to get up and running with Linux Mint. And this same basic uh, sort of process applies to other Linux distributions like Ubuntu. And then a lot of the process will apply to other uh, operating systems entirely uh, with using the UNet Booten tool. Obviously, those operating systems work a little bit differently than Linux Mint in a lot of cases. So this will at least get you up into the desktop point where you can actually start using your computer for things like surfing the web, uh, downloading files, and that sort of thing, and get you up and running. So hopefully this little quick tutorial was helpful for some of you that have never experimented with installing Linux Mint and didn't really know where to get started. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. So as you can see, it's actually really, really easy to get up and running with alternative operating systems. This obviously was geared towards Linux, but this same type of process applies to other operating systems that may be floating around as well, including other Linux distributions that I'm not covering. Obviously we use Linux Mint here, but the same process for things like Ubuntu or other Linux distributions. So here's where I kick it back to you guys. Are you using an alternative operating system that is not Mac or Windows? And if you are, let me know exactly what distribution of what system you're using down below in those comments. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Hardware. And as always, we'll let YouTube go ahead and queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Who's Your Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.